I went through one of my best time in life in this net, and I also went through one of my difficult period. I can buy anything body can buy. I'm not a thief. Those that put me in prison, no reason they put me in prison. All right, um, lots of reactions have been trolling with um, the recent uh, administrations and reforms of President Asiwajubola Ahmed Tinubu. Um, lots of Nigerians are saying he has uh, hit the ground running as earlier promised. Lots of people are saying that uh, he is trying to justify his position so as not to be ousted out of the presidential villa when Peter Obi reclaims his alleged stolen mandate. Of course, this is politics and lots of reactions will troll whoever um, is the presidential choice of the people of Nigeria as opposed by other opposition parties. Okay, my name is Anjali Himalayas. Welcome to Nation for Easter. I have an update for you. I will call this first update the end of MFL. I will call the first part of it the sins of MFL. Yes, um, MFL Godwin, um, the governor of the central bank, let me say former governor of the central bank, has been trending online for the wrong reasons. It's no longer news that he has been arrested or he was actually suspended by President Asiwaju Bolatinubu and then um, he wasn't arrested until today, the 10th day of June 2023. Um, con contrary to issues or information that erupted yesterday that his arrest was enacted by the DSS yesterday. Now, to be precise and straight to the point, Godwin Emefele, former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, of course, has now been captured by the Directorate of State Security. And um, the possibility of him returning to the Central Bank of Nigeria is a non-existent possibility. Now, if there was any government, let me tell you his sins, outrightly, I wouldn't hide anything. If there was any government, of any government official that has kept millions of Nigerians on their knees, begging for the past nine years or thereabouts it's definitely and it has to definitely be godwin emefele the suspended central bank of nigeria governor now president bola asiwaju tinubu in a not so shocking development dropped the axe on emefele who had caught the figure of a pitiful soul today while he was caught in lagos in some sort now, largely due to um, the excruciating effects of his many ill, thought out, poorly executed physical and monetary policies in Nigeria. I am going to count his sins and under this particular issue, I will discuss three sins of Godwin Emefele. So you could term this update, the three sins of Godwin Emefele. Now, the first one is doing Emefele's emergence into office in 2014. Um, the Naira issued by the Central Bank of Nigeria and believed to have been in economic circulation was less than one and a half a trillion. Okay, that is how it was recorded according to the GDP and the um, and the and the budget that was produced and recorded by MFLA and his team of central bank workers. Yes. Now, after a year into office, it was now existent and it erupted to one point. Four six trillion in circulation now. So the allegation here is of Godwin Emefele controlling the price and inflation in the country. It was really unclear why he why he was actually um, allowing the price of um, things and demand in the country going from up down. You know there was this kind of fluctuation in um, the alleged inflation price, okay? And Godwin Emefele never explained this to a high degree to anyone. He was holding this as a secret and kept on publishing wrong information and wrong um, account um, um, information to Nigerians and to the Senate. Now, so there were these things to be put in check and the government did not put this in check because the government of President Mahmoud Buhari was a government where he believed everybody was transparent if you had just said you were swearing to your God or you meant what you were saying. President Mahmoud Buhari will let you go. And that was the reason why God in MFLA was not checked. His second sin was molesting and strangulating the GDP, the gross domestic product. I would not say much on this because um, 
those the experts in accounting and budget would actually know what i mean here um mfla went further to strangulate and molest and bring to a lowest minimum in fact he caused a sort of economic catastrophe and a sort of budgetary pandemonium in the central bank this had issues or this actually enacted or skyrocketed sporadic issues that had to um bring down the gdp of nigeria over time and that was the reasons why lots of products in the market were recorded to be rising and falling over time the final and third scene of mfla was the overhyped forex the issue of forex has taken over the country alongside the btc the cryptocurrency and so on now the issue of forex sometime the senate wanted to move for the uh, banning or for the banishment of forex and other cryptocurrency issues god in mfla was in if the the core of this particular issue and he over time hyped the forex in nigeria or the forex industry in nigeria and well i will not say much on this because he has already been arrested and a new cbn governor has already been uh, put in place to replace him over time till he comes out of detention of the director of state security which we are yet to see so that is that on that particular update before i go further i would allow you to watch a video where he was captured today in lagos and um, shipped into a private jet where he would meet his waterloo at the headquarters of the directorate of the state security in abuja what is it was just a sorry sight i feel so 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 remorseful for mfla but somehow i don't feel remorseful because um justice has just taken its course watch this video Second on the update is about um, a former governor of um, from, from the southeast, preferably um, Abia State. I would call this update Uzokalu Wept. That is what I would say. Uh, because I have never seen a politician or a public office holder or a legislative chief officer or a legislator whip in public. Now, Oji Uzokalu wept during uh, a preliminary sitting of the Senate as regards to the build-up to the choice of the Senate presidency as opposed to the choice of the APC and its camp. The senator reiterated how he had suffered for the Senate House right from the day he was um, selected or elected rather as um, a Senate elect or a senator elect from his own state. Now, the truth is this. Oji Uzokalu wants to um, be the Senate president by all means, okay? And the APC, where he belongs to, have come out to tell him through Bola Siwaju Tinobu and Kashim Shetima, the president and vice presidents respectively, that please, this particular seat is not for you, okay? They have reserved these seats for Akbabio and so on and so forth. And I tell you what, I see no Oji Uzokalu going close to the Senate presidency. Because um, whether you cry or not, I will say that um, the decision has been made already. It is now left for the opposition members of the Senate to stage their own candidate and we'll see who wins the election come sometime during this month. Without wasting much of your time, let me allow you to give up or watch this brief clip where um, Uzo Kalu wept. He wept so bitterly and I don't think um, emotion works on Nigerians anymore because um, recently or of recent we've seen politicians using um, a sort of emotional imbalance to cry out their hearts to Nigerians as a form of style to kind of co-opt or to bring forth pity from the hearts of unknown or unsuspecting Nigerians. Let me allow you to watch this video. When we come back, we'll give you more analysis. Stay tuned. I went through one of my best time in life in this Senate, and I also went 
through one of my difficult periods. Also, a dissident. Before I came to the Senate, before I came into politics, I can buy anything body can buy. I'm not a thief. Those that put me in prison, no the reason they put me in prison. They took over all my businesses and want to kill me. But I survived it. I'm in the Senate with you people. It's not the end to what we have done. It's not the end to United Nigeria. It's not the end to Brother Skipper. But these senators I called were with me. I never laughed. When the PDP that I was governor for two times was being formed, I brought every money they used in forming that party. Every penny in 1997 and 98. And I later became a thief. And people I gave transport money from my house in VI, VI became angels. This is what Nigeria represents. I want to thank my colleagues for giving me these four years of uninterrupted support. Because this country is not fair to so many of us. I built this country, I employed 13,800 workers. People employed not, nobody, and nobody asked them their source of wealth. I have three factories in Lagos, Nigeria. I have two factories in Ota, built manufacturing. I have three factories in Aba, manufacturing. And I'm a thief. And people that cannot explain where their source of wealth come from, they are not thieves. I leave everything in the hands of God. May God be the judge. Thank you very much, uh, Chief. All right, Oju Zokalu there. I would say, you've seen him crying. I don't know. Um, well, he's not a baby. So if he will cry, I have seen no um, situations in the Senate that would make um, him to cry. Because when he was being pursued by the EFCC, um, it was to his own peril and to his own um, danger, okay? That was to his own risk because he knows what he indulged in and he knows why the EFCC were after him. So if you would count that as a form of suffering um, during the, his time as a senator or during his first tenure as a senator, that shouldn't be counted. And please, um, cries and wailings and shouts and, you know, all sorts of emotional uh, games shouldn't be played in Nigerian politics because um, Nigerians have grown um, above having sort of emotional pity on politicians because when these people get into office they they more or less forget us okay so uh, if they forget us we should also make them understand that um those who gave you the mandate are worthy to call you back to other if you go outside the box so um Oju Zokalo, please forget the senate presidency i don't see you going there that is my own take on this yes and before we go further i will urge our viewers both incoming and already existing to please Tap the subscribe button and also tap the notification bell so you could get updates either ways anytime to drop new videos or new content and to all of you that have been supporting us over time by any way possible please like share and um watch this video to the end that's the most paramount thing to this content and um first and lastly i would urge you to please drop a comment for us in the comment section if you feel different from anything we do here Finally, a member of the Civil Society Commission poured out his anger over the conduct of the just concluded election. Now, during a recent review by INEC that was headed by its commission national officers, this particular representative didn't stop at anywhere to call out the Independent National Electoral Commission chairman and his national officers over lots of electoral or varieties of manipulations, irregularities, electoral malpractices, recorded during the elections. The elections are over, coalitions are over, there are different petitions tribunals taking place in different states as well as the presidential tribunals taking place in the Court of Appeal. But the truth remains that this particular um, time or this review given by this particular member 
of the Civil Society Commission is something that was unanimously agreed to be said out to the public because I don't think those at the tribunal know this particular information that was brought out or that was called out by this representative from the Civil Society Commission. Without wasting much of your time, let me allow you to watch a clip from the long um, interview or from the long speech and address he had to give during the review of the 23 general elections. Watch this. And I represent my Jim Foundation here, sub sub steering committee, person representing that zone. The big question is, should we continue to do the same kind of report every election cycle? This has been the trend of our reports. The nature of evidence that we collected, that we have, should also form part of our report. The fact that we are putting in public space, in the, in the public domain, that INEC should do some sort of self-assessment and follow rules and regulations, the Electoral Act and all of that, when we know, obviously, that they have failed us, to me, shouldn't come in here. Because INEC failed us. Some of us saw what happened, escaped death, because we are doing situation room work and for our decisions as well. And each time the election cycle comes and it goes, this is how we gather to talk about issues concerning how we can move forward. INEC will not take us forward. Can't we begin to think of what to do to strengthen situation room and probably identify organizations that will take actions thereafter? If we can't do that, for crying out loud, we should have information, pictures of how INEC has failed us in our report, at least to show the world that we did observation. We have dozens of information. None is here. What we, what we have here is beautiful pictures and putting up words that will make the whole process look as though we are jokers. And I'm not happy with the report. I need to be sincere about it. And we need to be clear and be focused that subsequently we need to take action as situation room to move this process forward. Thank you. All right, all said and done, I will say that... Um there are lots of issues to be discussed, but um, we would need a sort of platform to give you that because um, um, the best to our knowledge is that the court has prevented uh, media devices from being brought into court. So we don't have actually a footage of um, what happened in court today, but we're told by our correspondents uh, that um, the media devices today were played in court and the first video played in court was that of um, the... INEC chairman, which was Professor Yakubu Mahmoud, where he outrightly promised out and out Nigerians that there is going to be a, a, like a due following of guidelines by the commission during the elections, which was um, the reverse opposite after or during the elections, especially the presidential elections. So I would still say and um, pray to and bring you another update on um, the outcome of what the tribunal had to say as headed by Justice Haruna Samani Simon. So in the wake of that, I would love to say thanks for always staying glued with Nation Voice Tower and thanks for keeping faith with us. I will urge you keep a date with us later in my next video. See you next time. Bye.